Joining me now is Kenny Todd, the Operation Integrations Manager for the International Space Station. Now, Kenny, first off, thanks for joining me. Uh, so you were here last week when we were just starting to look at the problem and analyze it. Why don't you just give me kind of an update, what happened over the weekend, and where are we now? Sure, you bet. Um, let's see, when we talked last week, uh, at that time, we were still pretty fresh into this mm -hmm. this particular issue, and the, the, the flow control valve was really the focus of our, our effort in trying to recover it. And uh, since that time frame, um, it's become apparent to us through all the evaluations that we've done that the flow control valve is not available to us to to continue regulating temperature in this, this particular ammonia loop. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, we... Uh, we started expanding out from that valve, looking at the rest of the system and looking to see if there's other ways that we could provide some temperature control into that loop. Um, and, uh, and we did uh, find a, an, what we term an isolation valve um, that uh, is just upstream of this, of this particular flow control valve on mm -hmm. the radiator side. So um, in the current way it was being used, it was a binary valve. It was either open or closed uh, for, the, for the ammonia coming from the radiator. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the team did a great job at looking and seeing can we use that particular valve as, as a, a regulator, if you will, to, uh, to uh, restrict the flow coming from the radiator. And, and by doing that, that would, that would help to bring the temperature in the, in the loop uh, a little warmer, mm -hmm. and hopefully to the point that we can start to reintegrate it back into the, to the bigger uh, thermal control system and control, control some of these loads, uh, the heat loads uh, in, inside the station. Um, we've uh, we've been focusing on that for the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, uh, we're taking a valve that, that, that and, and using it for a different purpose than what we originally intended. So we didn't have a, a controller in place to go in and, and and basically control this valve at the small increments um, mm -hmm. that uh, that was that it was originally uh, planned for. Uh, we've been working with the vendor, the hardware vendor for this particular valve, and they say absolutely it can be controlled in the manner that you want. Um, so what we've been doing for the last couple of days is trying to put the right uh, systems in place, software on the ground, commanding capabilities, if you will, to try to allow us to be able to, to control that valve in a manner that allows us to, to uh, stop it where we want to stop it. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, uh, as of this morning, the team is is uh, continuing that effort. Um, uh, it seems like as we as we move along and learn more about this valve and the way to command it, uh, it's clear that we have to operate it in very small increments on the order of, of 100 milliseconds, and and uh, putting the capability in the control center here to allow us to do that has uh, has been has been a, a quite an effort over the last two days. And so uh, this morning, the team is going through that effort um, mm -hmm. to. Uh, to command this valve and do it in its in small increments, and so um, that's uh, I mean we're it's it's kind of a, a, a turn the valve, watch it for a little bit, see what the mm -hmm. temperatures do, see what the flow rates do, and uh, we're having some success with regard to characterizing the system uh, using this particular method. Uh, whether or not it will be enough to allow us to uh, put heat loads back onto the system mm -hmm. from other parts of the loop, but we can't tell yet. Um, um, given that, uh, given that we're kind of developing a new philosophy for how to manage the loop using yeah. this this valve, um, along with some other parts of the system, I would say it's still very much in work. And and whether or not we can pull it off, I would uh, uh, I would I would hazard to uh, <laughs> to give you any kind of percentage at this point. But uh, the team is working very hard mm -hmm. to to do that. And and uh, again, having some degree of success this morning in, in trying to at least. Uh, characterize the system mm -hmm. a little better with this particular valve. So, uh, so we're pretty excited about that, and we'll see how things go, go the rest of the day. Okay, and just for a quick snapshot, right? So, where, what condition is the loop in right now? Like, what kind of loads are you guys actually placing on it? What systems are on a different loop shut down? Sure. Uh, relative to this loop, we call it loop A. Mm -hmm. um, there are some external loads. Uh, we have uh, uh, some what we call a main bus switching unit that's mm -hmm. external to the station um, that uh, has to be heated. There's some cold plates out there with it that have uh, ammonia running through them. Mm -hmm. But it's it's all just external equipment that's being being uh, uh, right now cooled or, or warmed through this particular part of the ammonia loop. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, whenever we can characterize this this operation of this particular loop a little bit better with this with this new uh, valve um, modulation philosophy mm -hmm. that we're trying to use, then then we can get into the point where we can talk about uh, introducing that ammonia into the heat exchanger uh, at the Node 2 or on the U.S. lab and start trying to draw some of the heat loads off the station. So we're not quite there yet, mm -hmm. and uh, and 
so at this point uh, we're still basically from a loot a standpoint at the same place we were last week in terms okay. of the of the what what the ammonia is actually touching at this point okay so and so the team's continuing to work on this you know very creative inventive fix mm -hmm. to try and get the loop you know in a m much more functional level would that be a permanent fix or would a spacewalk i know the spacewalk the astronauts are preparing for it this week but we, we don't know for sure yet if that's going to happen would a spacewalk still be necessary to bring this back up to kind of like its full you know 100 percent functionality well, you know, it, whenever we uh, whenever we figure out just how hard this, we might, we call it limping along. Sometimes you mm -hmm. can figure out a way to limp along for mm -hmm. two months, four months, six months, and a lot of that's going to be driven by uh, how operationally complex it is to try to, to live with a particular issue. And, gotcha. and until we understand exactly, you know, how this system gets characterized and what it means to try to operate with the limits that that we'll have to lo operate within, uh, given given this particular valve and and the other other uh, options that are available to us, we may or may not be able to do that for an extended period of time. Um, if we can't do it for you know the foreseeable future for an extended period of time, then then we obviously we got to look at other options. Mm -hmm. But but um, clearly at some point in the future uh, we're going to want to go get the system back to its its yeah. nominal. Uh, you know, uh, situation with the pump module, and, and so uh, that's uh, it's just a matter of timing and when we do that. So, I, it, it, okay. th that would be our clear path at some point to do that. Okay, well, again, Kenny Todd, uh, Ops Integration Manager for the station teams, continuing to work here in Mission Control to try and get that loop uh, back up to where it was uh, before the issue cropped up last week. Uh, Kenny, thanks for giving us a quick update, really appreciate it. We're going to continue to follow along. Thank you, thanks.